in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare the grace that puts you practically in dominion beginning from today may that grace rest upon you now and we have introduction let's understand very importantly that the foundation of anything determines its stability strength and durability and what is foundation the word foundation simply means the solid on the ground base for something from this convention the base of your Christianity shall be solidified Amen. you have been destined for dominion yes so they I'm destined for dominion Amen. louder yet Which means you have been destined to take charge of every situation and circumstance of life. However, your dominion can only become a reality when you have the right foundation. What is this foundation for dominion that we are talking about? The Bible is very clear about this. Let's read from the word of God, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. What is this foundation for dominion that we are unveiling? Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand as sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone, how many people? Does that include you? Everyone, male, female, whether right here on ground in Canaan land or anywhere across the nations of the earth, let everyone that name the name of Christ do what? <laughs> and then the next verse tells us very clearly. The next verse, but in the great house, there are not only verses of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor some unto this honor. You shall not be a vessel unto this honor. Amen. And then the next verse. Look at what the Bible says here. If a man therefore purge himself. Who will purge himself? He shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified. Say with me sanctification. sanctification. Shout it louder yet. So what is this foundation for dominion? Shout it loud again. The foundation for dominion is sanctification. Sanctification is that sure foundation. And if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What is sanctification? Simply define sanctification means separation from sin and defilement it is two way one sanctification means separation from sin and defilement and then dedication to god sanctification is a two-edged sword on one side of the sword separation from sin and from what? And from defilement. On the other edge of the sword is what? Dedication unto God. Everything that defies destiny must be separated from you upon this mountain. Amen. Everything that has been defiling your destiny must not return with you from this mountain. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. So we must understand that one encounter with God is only accessible on his own terms. Encounter with God is only accessible on God's own terms. Upon this mountain, 
somebody will still encounter God. Amen. If you are the one I'm talking to, say, I receive it. I receive it. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible tells us your sanctification is the will of God. Exodus 19 and verse 10, God said to Moses, tell them to wash their clothes and get ready. Let them be clean because on the third day I am coming. God has been visiting us since this convention began. But beginning from this moment to the end of this convention, God will manifest himself in your life in a strange manner. Let your amen show it. Next, we must understand that sanctification is a personal responsibility. No one can sanctify one for another. Sanctification is a personal, non-transferable responsibility. So you must take responsibility for your sanctification. You must take responsibility for your sanctification. No one can engage in sanctifying you for you. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 22. Look at what the word of God tells us here. First Thessalonians 5, 22. He says, abstain from all appearance of evil. It's your personal responsibility. First John 3, 3. The word of God is very clear about this. We live in a world that is polluted. Everywhere you turn, sin, iniquity, unrighteousness, impurity. But where sin abides, grace also abides much more. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 3. Look at God's word here. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. Every man that had this hope in him does what? Can I hear you say it louder? Does what? Turn to your neighbor, tell him or her, purify yourself. Shout the Lord, amen. amen. Sanctification is a personal responsibility. You will not fail in this responsibility. Amen. Just like your physical personal cleansing is your responsibility. Before you came in, for instance, to this meeting today, you had some personal cleansing. Most likely you brush your teeth it's part of your personal cleansing. Most pro probably, you wash your face. Maybe you took a shower. You looked at yourself in the mirror. You put on the clothes you wanted to wear this morning. All these are part of your physical, personal cleansing. It's in the same way with sanctification. And you wouldn't say, for instance, I brushed my teeth last week. So I want you to brush it again till next year. Will you do that? If you try to attempt that, anybody that stays around you will quickly, oh, 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 close their nose and move away from you. That's not you in Jesus' name. It's the same thing with sanctification. It is present and it is continuous. Sanctification is not a once in a lifetime affair. Just like you're taking a shower, you're brushing your teeth, you're grooming your hair, you're trimming your beards, you do it again and what? And again. It's not a question of once and for all, but once and what? And again. It's the same thing with sanctification. And the grace of God is available upon this mountain. You will not fail in that grace. Amen. And listen very carefully, young people. Sanctification is not a gift. It is a choice. And upon this mountain, as you make that choice for sanctification, you will make it to the end. Amen. And for those of us who have made it in time past, you will never go back again. 
Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Number three, we must understand that it's a fierce battle against your sanctification. There is a fierce battle against your sanctification. We have heard God's servant, the presiding bishop, say it over and again that life is a battlefield. It is not a playground. Life is a battlefield. It's not what? A playground. The great man of God of blessed memory, Billy Graham said, and I quote, the Christian life isn't a playground, but a battlefield. I see you winning that battle. Let me hear you believing in man. So we must be determined to conquer that battle. Say, I will conquer that battle. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12 tells us, fight the good fight of faith. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 4 tells us, you have not yet resisted sin as unto blood. There is a fierce battle against your sanctification. Upon this mountain, the grace to continue to win that battle to the end, receive it in Jesus' name. Say with me, I receive it. it. Shout it loud, amen. Amen. But what does it take to live a sanctified life? That's the question. What does it take to live a sanctified life? Now that we have said it's a personal responsibility, number one, genuine repentance. Say with me, genuine repentance. There must be genuine repentance from every known sin. First John chapter 1 verse 9. There must be genuine repentance to live a sanctified life. There must be genuine repentance. The Bible says if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There must be genuine repentance from every known sin. And that includes confession and forsaking. You confess your sins, then you forsake it. That is the meaning of genuine repentance. It's not enough to confess a known sin. You must ensure you don't go back to your vomit. You lied yesterday. Oh God, please I ask for your forgiveness. I know I ought not to do that. You have confessed it. But you don't go back tomorrow again and lie and say, Oh, well, tomorrow I will go back to God and ask for forgiveness. You confess it and you forsake it. You are here upon this mountain. Personal cleansing must take place in your life. All those lies must come to an end. All those forms of examination my practices must come to an end. Let me hear your loud amen. All those kinds of sexual immorality must come to an end. Some of you came out from some places to this convention this year and you know that such a place does not glorify God. You must not go back there again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. Of the opposite sex is passing, and then your head is following and turning until it reaches and good ninety. The Bible tells us, "Let your eyelids look straight before you. Don't come to a 
convention like this and then you are looking all around, you are sizing up people, you are trying to locate one person or another that you begin to connect with, let your eyes be focused on God. Tap your neighbor and say, did you hear? Shout the Lord, amen. amen. All those kinds of curse words that you use, all those slangs, don't tell me that's how it's done now in the world. We are not ruled by the world, we are ruled by the word. me, I am ruled by the word of God, not by the world around me. Shout the loud amen. amen. All those pornographic materials that you have wherever you came from, when you get back, you need to go and burn them off. Enough is enough. Say me, enough is enough. Tap your neighbor, tell him, enough is enough. Enough is enough. What are those ungodly websites that you go to visit on the internet? It has no stop. And that's how many young people get tied up in the things of the world. But as for you, no more. Can I hear your dominion in my yeah. Confess it and do what? Forsake it. Number two, be committed to self-examination. Self-examination. As I said earlier, sanctification is continuous. And don't ever forget that salvation it's not a question of once saved and always saved. You have to examine yourself. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Look at what the word of God says. It's very clear. Second Corinthians 35. Examine. Who is to examine you? Self-examination is the best examination. Examine yourself. In Luke chapter 15 verse 17, remember the story of the prodigal son? He examined himself. In this convention, you have times that are free for you. Spend those times to examine yourself. For instance, you are here in this convention. Is there anything right now that is with you in your hand and you know it is not your own including the bible that you are holding <laughs> lost and found does somebody understand what i'm talking about some people go to the extent of stealing bible ah Say with me, ah, ah, ah. shout it like no more. It amazes me. Amen. It amazes me. You come to church, the house of God, and you are not afraid to hold in your hand. Or pick anything, not even a biro that is not your own. Say with me, no more. <laughs> if there is anything in your hand though, that is not your own, drop it before you leave this convention. Drop it. Return it. Say me, I hear. <laughs> Self-examination. Is there anybody here holding a fake certificate? Some persons are not even afraid. A fake certificate and you go out to seek for jobs with it. Whatever you did before in time past, as you confess your sins, God forgives. But you must not go back there again. 
the next one you try to do, you will not go scot free. Shout the loud amen now. Number three, feed on the word of God. Do what? Feed on the word of God. Psalm chapter 119 and verse 11. Psalm 119 verse 11. The Bible is very clear about it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Ephesians 5 26. The word of God is water that washes us clean. It washes us clean. As a youth, you must ensure that you, for example, have scheduled time for the word of God in your life. If you cannot do that as a youth, it becomes much more difficult as you grow older. I gave my life to Christ as a teenager and God has given me the opportunity to learn so much early in my life. By the time I was in secondary school, I had set out time for studying the Bible, for praying, for fasting, and that has stuck with me. It has become a way of life. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, you know, do. So, schedule specific time. Don't say, oh, when I have time, I'll study the Bible. No. Every word study time is time for taking a spiritual shower. It's time for spiritual cleansing. Every time you study the word, you are cleansing yourself, you are taking a spiritual shower. If you have never done that before, make sure you do that before you leave this convention. What times of the day are you going to be studying the Bible, reading it, meditating, searching the scriptures? What time are you setting apart for prayers? It can be any time. But for me as an individual, I find it easier to do that early in the morning. Again, the Bible says, early will I seek thee. Your mind is fresh. You are focused. The things of the day are not bombarding you yet. So, schedule time for studying the word of God. And then number four, maintain a pure conscience. Acts 24, 16 is very clear about it. Maintain a pure conscience. Certainly pure conscience. Herein do I exercise myself to always have a conscience void of offense. Your conscience is your personal law enforcement agent. Your conscience is your God-ordained policeman. Your conscience is your personal judge. Let your conscience guide you. And as you give room to your conscience, it will become sharper and sharper by the day. Shout the Lord, Amen. amen. Number five, maintain pure thoughts. Thoughts. Proverbs 23, 7 tells us, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Maintain pure thoughts. Mark chapter 7 and verse 23. Mark 7, 23. The word of God says very clearly, All these evil things come from within and they defy the man. You must understand, until there is a change within, there cannot be a change without. And that change within begins with your thoughts. Shout the loud amen. amen. Everyone is seated here in this auditorium for those of us who are here today, for example. When they take attendance, they add you to the number. But you know it's possible. You are seated right here at the Fair Tabernacle and your thoughts are far away. Probably in your dormitory. Probably on your bed you are lying down. Probably in your hometown. Maybe you are even traveling and driving right now. By virtue of your thoughts, 
But you are seated here as a man thinketh, so is he. To live a sanctified life, your thoughts must be purified. Every deadly thought, ugly thought that might be going through anyone's mind right now, I curse it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Next, keep a right company. This one I love it. Keep the right word company. First Corinthians 15 33. Remember, the company you keep determines what accompanies you. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupts what? Good manners. Show me your friend, it is said, and I will show you who you are. For two cannot work together except the question right now is who is your best friend I don't know write down the name of your best friend right now write down the name of your best friend who is your best friend do you want to be like him or her <laughs> shout the Lord hallelujah do you want to be like him or her if your answer is no, then you need to change your friend. Some of you shouted Jesus, yes. <laughs> After Jesus, you come. <laughs> Ask your neighbor. After Jesus, you come. <laughs> that person that you speak your heart to, your so-called bosom friend, I know it's Jesus, but after Jesus, who is next? <laughs> Don't write Jesus in your notebook. Oh. <laughs> write the name of your best friend after Jesus. If you don't want to be like that person, then change your friend. There are so much you under the sound of my voice today. You need to disconnect from some persons in your life. Because if you don't do so, they will disconnect you from God. Oh. I have never. Praise the Lord. I have never at any point in my life had an unbeliever as a friend. Never. It has never happened. What are you doing with an unbeliever as your friend? You say, oh, I'm trying to win him or her to Christ. It's a lie. It's a lie. Shout the light, amen. amen. Evil communication corrupts good manners. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, remember the story of Amnon and Jonadab? Amnon had a friend. You also have a friend. Who is your friend? If you need to change your friend today, do it quickly before it is too late. Why? The kind of friends you keep either makes you or mars you. Your destiny shall not be mad. Birds of the same feather flock together. You never see a bird in the air befriending a fish in the ocean. They don't belong. Oil and water never mixes well together. Separate yourself from all those negative friends. And then it will be easier for you to live a sanctified life. Say, I hear you. Oh. Tap your neighbor and say, did you hear Finally, number seven. Finally, number seven. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Depend on the Holy Spirit, not on your strength. Because by strength shall no man do what? Prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. First Samuel 2, 9. And I want to believe that all of us here 
if not all, majority of us are baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Do I have the witness in the house? In case you are not, make sure during your break time, show up to our leaders in the convention. As long as you are born again, the Holy Ghost is the gift of God to you. 1976, I prayed as a young believer in one primary school all by myself, knelt down and said, God, this is my desire, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And while thanking God, he came with his power from on high. My life has never been the same again. Baptism in the Holy Ghost is required because he is the fire from heaven. And when he comes into your heart, he burns off all those chaps. It's one thing for you to be baptized though in the Holy Ghost. It's another thing for you to give him room to do his work of sanctification in your life. How do you do that? By praying what? In the Holy Ghost. Jude verse 20. Unto you beloved. It says building up yourself as you pray in the Holy Ghost. So spend time every day to pray in tongues. And as you do so, sanctification becomes easy for you. Shout the loud amen. amen. What therefore, as we end up, are the benefits of sanctification? All the structures from God, they are to our benefit, not to God's benefit. What are some of the benefits? Number one, access to divine secrets. Divine secret is what makes stars in the kingdom. You are the next star to be made. Yeah. Let me hear your loud amen. Yeah. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, Daniel proposed not to defile himself. And then in chapter 2 verse 19, he was turned into a star. Several men in scriptures same thing with Job. Job chapter 1. He eschewed evil. And then shortly after that, he became the greatest in the east. You are the next one that God will promote. <laughs> what of Abraham? The Bible makes it clear. Genesis eighteen seventeen. Abraham, the friend of God. Genesis eighteen seventeen. Shall I hide anything from Abraham? From this mountain, God will begin to confide in you. Yeah. The same thing with Moses. We see that very clearly. Chapter 34 and verse 10 of Exodus. You are the next Moses that God will promote. Yeah. When you have access to divine secret, failure and stagnation comes to an end in your life. Therefore, from this mountain, no more failure for you. Yeah. The last examination you fail is the last you will ever fail. Yeah. Upon your return from this mountain, supernatural promotions. Yeah. Miracle jobs. Yeah. All those places where you have been told, we don't want to see you. They'll be the one looking for you. Oh, we have been looking for you. Number two, divine wisdom. Access to divine wisdom. We see that in the life of Daniel. You will be the next Daniel. Yeah. Psalm 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The beginning of wisdom. I see someone departing from this mountain with a fresh baptism of the spirit of wisdom. Yeah. Then, of course, number three, supernatural breakthroughs. I love this one. Everywhere you turn, on your arrival from this convention, it shall be breakthrough galore. No more breakdown in your life. Even that 
marital breakthrough that you have been believing God for. As you depart from this mountain and you continue to sanctify yourself by the word of God and in every way it will come through for you. Yeah. Without you scouting around from location to location, from fellowship to fellowship, from one subgroup to another, in search of a wife or of a husband, God will bring the two of you together supernaturally. Yeah. That miracle marital breakthrough maybe has been waiting for your sanctification. Upon this mountain, there shall be divine connectivity. Yeah. You must have heard God's servant in presiding bishop over and again. I didn't pray for a wife. It's part of the addition from God. According to him, God said to him, that is your wife. There are some of you under the sound of my voice today. Shout the Lord, amen. amen. There are some of you under the sound of my voice today. You will hear God very clearly. Amen. Concerning that marital issue in your life. By this time next year, I year 2023, if Jesus tarries, many of you that are single today will return covenantly married. If you are the one, let your amen show it. And then access to our inheritance in Christ. Your inheritance in Christ includes dominion spiritually physically academically in your career dominion as you depart from this mountain begin to lay hold on your inheritance yeah. and finally eternity with Christ I love this one because what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul. Save me, I shall not lose eternity. Shout it like you believe it. Point one finger to your neighbor. Say, you shall not lose eternity. Shout it loud, amen. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Look at what the Bible says here. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous, unsanctified shall not inherit the kingdom of God? You will inherit the kingdom of God. I tell people every time I have the opportunity, life is meaningless and useless without eternity. Life does not end here. There is a place called there. It takes sanctification to get there. And you will make it. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. The more you clean up, the more you climb up. The more you clean up, the more you climb up. The more you clean up, the more you do what? Climb up. From this convention, I see you climbing up. Yeah. And when you climb up, you will not come down. Yeah. Because sanctification takes you up and keeps you up. There are many of you under the sound of my voice today that in a short while from now, your name will become like a household name. Yeah. And that will happen in my own lifetime. Yeah. Just like when you hear winners today, nobody doubts that. When you hear Oyedepo today, demons tremble, they scatter. Your own name shall be more stronger. 
But for that to happen, you must continue to do what? Clean up. You will climb up and you keep going up. Yeah. Everything that defies from this day forward will not have dominion over you anymore. Yeah. Therefore, welcome to your life of unlimited dominion. You shall make eternity. Rise up on your feet right now, everybody. Lift up your voice to God. Amen. Lift up your right hand to God and say after me, Oh God, I receive your word. Give me grace to be a doer of the same. Shout the light, Amen. Please put your right hand on your forehead right now. Father, in Jesus' name, based on the confessions of this, your precious people, let sanctification become a way of life for us. So shall it be. Every form of defilement is cause of everybody's life now. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout the louder, amen. Put your hands together for the Lord and please. Hello, brethren. We pray that this message from the servants of God has brought blessings to you. If you have not yet been born again, we ask that you kindly join us in this prayer. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and that I cannot save myself. I ask you to forgive me my sins and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I trust in you alone for my salvation and ask that you guide and help me to live for you alone from this day forward. Thank you for your grace and your mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. Kindly like this video and share with your friends and families. Leave your comments at the comment section and tell us where you're watching us from. Remember, Jesus loves you. Stay blessed.